May it please the court, counsel, and members of the jury, I appreciate your patience and tolerance during this long process. It is a privilege for me to talk to you about this case. Now we're here for justice. You, members of the community, will consider these factors and grant Mr. Smith the relief that he has requested. This is not a criminal case. It is a civil case and the judge will instruct you that we have to show that we have met our burden of proof. The burden of proof in a civil action is called preponderance of evidence. Preponderance of the evidence. This means that we have tipped the scale of justice in our favor. It requires you to believe us more than the other side. This is a case where Jason Smith has proven to you that the defendant was negligent and that these facts are to be true. And you should find that the defendant was at least 50% at fault. The defendant ran through a stop sign and crashed into Mrs. Smith's car. That's negligent. Even though accidents do happen, Regardless of our situation in life, we must be accountable. On March 16, 2001, Jason Smith's life changed. The defendant was beating and ran a stop sign, crashed into Mrs. Smith's car, and caused permanent damages to Jason's body. I stand before you asking for a true verdict in favor of Mr. Smith, because justice demands this. Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one issue in this case. It simply is this. Was the defendant negligent when he drove his car and crashed into Mr. Smith's car? The answer is obvious. Yes, the defendant was negligent. And he was the only one who was negligent and that the defendant negligent was the only cause of Mr. Smith's injuries. We reached this conclusion by looking at the facts. On March 16, 2001, as Jason Smith was driving home from a normal day of teaching, the defendant ran a stop sign and crashed into Jason Smith. The defendant wants you to know and wants you to believe that it was raining so hard that he could not see the stop sign and that he exercised reasonable care in driving this car and driving his car that day. When it's raining hard, a driver has a duty of care to slow down and exercise more caution. Chart one. Go over the chart. Okay. Please remember that the defendant testified that prior to the accident, he used this route before. He took notice of all the stop signs along the street. But he failed to notice this stop sign on that specific day. He also testified that he was driving 20 miles per hour in a 30 miles zone. He said that he could not see 15 feet. The defendant cannot see anything beyond 15 feet in front of him because of the rain. When a car is going on a 20 miles per hour on a wet pavement. The stop distance has been estimated to be 60 feet. This means that the defendant could hit any car. That means that the defendant could hit any car that he never saw. So this area from, from the end of the 15 feet to 60 feet is where the defendant is blind. This is not only negligent, but also reckless behavior. The defendant testified that Jason Smith hit his car. 
This does not make sense. How could Jason Smith back when shoe explode when it was alleged that the front of his car hit the defendant's car? The defendant testified that he did not see the stop sign because it's already bent down. It was bent down. Rather than taking the responsibility for his reckless behavior, he wants you, the jury, to believe that the city was at fault. However, the truth came out during his deposition when he said that he did not see the stop sign because of the rain. He said that he saw the bent stop sign after the accident. In other words, he has been on this road for 45 minutes in pouring rain. All he wanted to do was to get home. He ran the stop sign. He should have known the stop sign was there. He had driven this way before. Whenever there is an intersection of a smaller road with a larger road, there is a stop sign. If there isn't a stop sign, there is certainly a duty of care. The defendant owned a duty of reasonable care to Jason because the defendant would have foreseen the risk of harm. Mistakes do not prevent the defendant from being liable. This is more than a mistake. It was negligent, reckless driving. Throughout this trial, the defendant has been saying that Jason Smith's neck injury were pre-existing. Even if this is true, the law holds that the defendant is still liable. The law said that you take a person as you find him. So what did the defendant do that was negligent here? First, he has the duty of care. A car is a, is a very dangerous weapon. He fell to have a proper look out for other. He failed to yield the right of way. He failed to come to a complete stop at an intersection. He failed to... He was going too fast in pouring rain and he couldn't stop in time. It is obvious that the defendant was negligent and that his own negligence was the real cause of this accident. So far, we have shown you that the defendant has the duty and that he breached that duty. The next element of negligence requires that there is actual harm. Before this collision, Jason Smith is a, is a healthy man. He was a good teacher. He also coached the school varsity wrestling team. He enjoyed outdoor sport activities, including but not limited to soccer. What happened to Jason after the collision? The car crashed into Jason with a severe impact and that the back windshield exploded and that he was thrown forward and then thrown backward and that his, the back of his head slamming through the windshield. He immediately felt the pain in the back of his head and the doctors testified that there was damages to his posterior cervical position, regions. In English, the back part of his neck is no longer functioning properly and he takes medication for pain. Dr. Middle treated Jason for neck pains, headaches, and prescribed physical therapy three times a week. During this time, his pain and headache worsened. He had difficulty distinguishing the color at, distinguishing colors at night. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't move his neck because any movement increases the pain.
What is Jason Smith's condition today? He used to be a coach. He used to coach a school varsity wrestling team. Today, he can't. He used to enjoy sport activity, running and soccer. Today, he can't do that either. He has a 4 to 5 percent permanent partial whole body impairment of his herniated disc, herniated cervical disc with residual symptoms. That means that his neck is permanently damaged and that he will and he will suffer in the future. He will require treatment for pain management at least five to six times per year for the rest of his life. He is 32 now. That means this treatment will go on for at least 40 years. This is about 240 times during his life and those visits will cost at least $100 for each treatment. That it is that is a small fortune. Members of the jury, the law said that if someone injure if someone is injured because someone else was negligent and caused the injury, the person is entitled to be compensated, but for the defendant action, Mr. Smith would not have been harmed. There is no reason to explain Mr. Smith's injuries. The defendant wants you to believe that it was rain, it was the rain, or the sign that was bent, or Mr. Smith driving. However, we have shown that the defendant had a duty of care. He breached that duty and he caused the harm to Mr. Smith and there's no other cause. There are several things we ask you to consider. The current medical expenses, future, the future medical expenses, the lost income, the future lost income, the physical disability, the disfigurement, the present pain and suffering, and the future pain and suffering. Above all, please remember this. This is Jason Smith's only day in court. This is the only time he can come before a jury and receive proper compensation for his injuries. The defendant was reckless and negligent and caused these injuries. This is the only time he can receive justice. We are confident that you will give him that. Thank you. 13 minutes and 17 seconds.